What's up everyone, it's Oliver. Today I'm gonna to be covering admission requirements that you need in order to get into a Canadian engineering school. This is gonna be part three of my video series on Canadian engineering school. So if you haven't seen the first two parts yet, go check those out, links will be in the description. There's gonna be a lot to cover in this video, so feel free to use the timestamps to skip around and find the parts that interest you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see a new video from me every week. The way that admission averages work here in Canada is based on your total average of your last two years of high school and the mandatory courses that you need in order to get into a certain program. We don't make you take a standard SAT or anything like that. However, if you're coming from a place where English isn't your first language, you will probably have to take some form of an English language test to prove that you can actually speak and use the language. And believe it or not, even though I'm mainly going to be talking about engineering here, English is a required course to get into engineering. And just to make you feel better, all Canadian students have to take some form of an English language test as well, usually in the 10th grade. And in Ontario, it's called the OSSLT or the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test, just to make sure that we all don't suck. And all the other provinces in Canada will also have something equivalent. So outside of the mandatory English course, you will also have to take some form of chemistry, physics, and math in order to get into an engineering program. And if you're planning on doing any kind of biomedical degree, be sure to take biology because that's obviously extremely important. So now that we know all of the basic courses that you would have to take, what are the admission averages for the top seven Canadian universities? If you missed it in the last two videos, here's a list of the top seven that I'm going to be referencing throughout the video. So let's start out with the province of Ontario. Since this is the most populated province in all of Canada, they have one central place where you can apply to multiple universities. This place is called the OUAC or the Ontario University Application Center and they have a form called Form 105, which you can look at in order to apply to multiple universities. So the website looks a little bit something like this and there are multiple different forms that you can look at. And the one that you would be interested in is if you're an Ontario student, you do 101. If you are not an Ontario student, then you go to 105. It's relatively simple. All you do is create your account, go to your application, or you can just browse programs to see what Ontario has to offer. There are some useful links on the right side of the page, and I think the most useful one is the how-to videos. So you can go here, take a look at how to apply, how to create an account, browse programs, complete the application, edit the application, and respond to an offer. So that's pretty much all you need for any university in Ontario. And the four in the list that are from Ontario are Waterloo, U of T, McMaster, and Queens. I noticed that U of T lets you apply directly to their school. So if you're only applying to U of T or only applying to one other university, they will let you directly apply, but I think the fee is more expensive than applying to a bunch of universities. So honestly, you may as well at least apply to three. Once you've had some time to look through the website, you should also figure out what the admission averages are for the university that you're interested in. So you'll know if you're a competitive applicant or not. So I'm gonna be looking at a bunch of admission averages starting with University of Waterloo. So looking at engineering specifically for Waterloo, you can see that biomedical and software engineering, if you have a 95% plus average, you only have a 50% chance of getting in, which means these two are the most competitive across all of these engineering fields. If you're in, if you want to go into computer, electrical, mechanical, mechatronics, and systems, if you have a 95 plus average, you have an 82% chance of getting in. And as you can see, you can look at these lower ones. If you have an 85 to 90, you have 4%. Here it's 20. These admission averages usually aren't the entire story and you'll have to complete a secondary application that showcases extracurriculars and all of the other things that you did during high school, which they also take into consideration when you're applying to a school such as Waterloo. Not every school has these additional application forms, but as far as I know, Waterloo and U of T do have one. So speaking about U of T, let's move to their admission averages. To get into engineering science, you need low to mid 90s. To get into undeclared or chemical, computer or electrical, you need high 80s to low 90s. And all other of their core eight programs, you need mid to high 80s. And if you're wondering what those core eight programs were, here they are, you can pause the video and take a look. So next up, we have Queen's University. If you go to the website, you'll only see two engineering types, electrical and computer engineering stream, which is mid 80s and mechatronics and robotics, which is nothing because it's a new program. They just introduced it. So 
Queens is another option for people who are interested in mechatronics or robotics, but also this doesn't cover all of Queens engineering programs. Most of them are somewhere between mid to high 80s, even low 90s to be competitive in getting into some of their engineering programs. And last but not least, we have McMaster Engineering, and since they have a general first year, everybody's admission average needs to be about the same. So you need an average range in the high 80s. I think the year that I got accepted, the average that you needed to get in was at least an 89. McMaster also has a second engineering program called Integrated Biomedical Engineering and Health Sciences. And in order to get into this program, you need at least 90% or higher, with most people getting in with about a 95 average. Great, so now that we've finished Ontario schools, we can move to the other three schools on the list. All of these three schools have their own independent application forms, so if you want to apply to these schools, you have to go directly to the schools. There is no provincial application system. So let's start off with UBC, how to apply, and their admission averages. You have a bunch of different steps that you can follow, and it will take you through literally everything you need to do from choosing your campus, reading your requirements, starting your online application, and other application tips, and then submitting it and paying the fee. International students who require study permit, guess what? You guys have to pay $120.75, while Canadians have to pay $71.75. So if we take a look at India, we'll see that for applied science engineering, the admission average is about 85% on India's grading scale. So with UBC out of the way, let's move on to U Alberta. So for U Alberta, I kind of had a hard time figuring out what their actual admission averages were. These are just the minimums, but I would definitely recommend getting at least an 85 average if you want to get into engineering. So in order to apply to the University of Alberta, they have their own online system that you can go to and click on one of these buttons depending on who you are and apply, create an account and apply to the University of Alberta. So this here is your general process for applying to Alberta. And last but not least, we have McGill University who lays out literally everything you need on this page of their website. So I'll be sure to link that in the video description. Deadline, what to apply to, make sure you're eligible, ready to apply, submit, apply for an entrance scholarship, definitely do that and submit documents and keep in touch and they will let you know if you got in. So McGill's admission averages are pretty crazy. Um, bioengineering, 96.5 average overall across the cohort and you have to get at least 92% in each math and science prerequisite course, which is pretty crazy. Um, and it continues along for every single type of engineering, except over here we have mining engineering, which has a little bit lower, but McGill is really making it a tough, tough, tough competition to get into their school. And the absolute crazy one here is software engineering, where you need 96% in each math and science course. So now that we've covered the basics of admissions, where can you go to get scholarships? Well, if you are a Canadian, there are tons of websites that you can go to to get a scholarship. For example, after a quick Google search, here are four websites that I found. Scholarships Canada, which I actually did use myself. 99 scholarships, which I've also been to myself. Wyconic and Student Awards. All of these websites have tons of random scholarships that you can apply to, so definitely go check them out and apply to as many scholarships as you can. Now, if you're an international student, go to your government website or your local communities and see if people are offering scholarships in those areas. I managed to get a scholarship through my hockey league just out of the blue. Also, another pro tip is that if you are a very high level athlete and any university gives you a full ride free tuition, definitely take it. It doesn't matter which school you go to. I've made a video about this in the past, talking about why your top choice doesn't matter. Going to school and not having to worry about how expensive it is is one of the best feelings in the world, so definitely go and take your free money. I know that some governments will pay for your education in a different country as long as you promise to come back and work in the country for a certain number of years. So outside of your government offering you a free ride, there are also other scholarships that you can look at within Canada. We have the Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship at the University of Toronto. Most of these scholarships will be affiliated with a particular university, such as York University. You get $60,000 to $100,000 for a four-year degree program, which you'll probably only pay for about one year of tuition. And UBC has very good entrance scholarships if you can get them. Carleton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Humber. All of these places have some very good scholarships, but they're all related to a particular university. 
Also, some universities will have a form of entrance scholarship that's available to everybody and you don't need to apply. You get automatically considered for it. So at Waterloo, you have the President's Scholarship, Merit Scholarship, Entrance Scholarships, and International Student Entrance Scholarships. Then you have other scholarships, which are basically across Canada scholarships. The Schulich Leader Scholarship is one of the largest ones. There are other similar ones like this, but they give you essentially a full ride if you're a Canadian citizen. And then you'll have other entrance scholarships. Some of them are based on country and other things, but they all have different requirements, so you do have to check those out. So I'm not gonna look at every single university's webpage and go through all of the scholarships, because there are a lot. So I do recommend going into Google, typing in the university you're interested in, and looking up what scholarships they have available. Also, you are gonna have to submit some form of a written essay for most scholarships, so be sure to have somebody who can help you proofread your work in order to make it sound really good. You might even be able to ask some of the services at the university that you're applying to if they're willing to help you out with the scholarship application. There are also tons of blogs and YouTube videos that can help you get a little bit better at writing and typing, so be sure to check those out too. There is a lot to consider when it comes to scholarships, but look around your community, look to your government, look in all of the places that you can possibly think of in order to apply and get a scholarship. And my last piece of advice is to just apply to a scholarship. Even if you don't meet some of the requirements, just apply because if you have a really good application that really stands out, they might still accept you and give you the scholarship. Thanks so much for watching this video. That'll bring us to the end of the engineering series on Canadian universities. If you missed the first two parts or you want the full playlist, check it out in the description down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really makes my day and you get to see a new video from me every week. With that being said, have a great day.